Hello and welcome to The Olive Tree. I'm Julia Fisher and my guest today is Andre Toplinsky. Welcome, Andre. Originally from Russia, you now live in northern Israel with your wife and three children. And you are the founder of Carmel Streams. Now, first of all, before we start talking about your new book, which is what we're going to do predominantly today, tell me about Carmel Streams. What is that? Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me. But the ministry, Carmel Streams, it's a teaching and actually it's equipping ministry. Our main focus is to equip people with the biblical knowledge. A, Israel, how we can relate to modern Israel. We're teaching, we're conducting seminars, we're organizing study and prayer tours to Israel. And also we're teaching Israel as a kingdom of God in the Old Testament. It's kind of Old Testament template. So it's more about teaching, but in reality, it's a ministry that building bridges between the body of believers in the nations and the body of believers, a messianic body here in Israel. So how do you do that practically? Now, we're living in a world that after Corona, let's use this expression, before Corona era, we used to conduct seminars in Israel and uh, people are coming here to, to learn or me going there to teach. That's kind of was a, a main venue. So now are you welcoming people back? Or are you having groups back in the land again? Yeah, actually we're praying right now to have a, a, a group from Finland, a small group. We're not aiming for buses, you know. Our point is to make a small groups, small study tours, uh, prayer tours, because we want people to experience uh, not just the land, we want people to experience the family of God in the land of Israel. So we welcome them to our congregation, and we have a, a good program, okay? So in, in September... We believe we will have a a new group from Finland. You say you're wanting to build bridges, Andre, and you're obviously passionate about the work that you're doing. How difficult is it to build those bridges between what is in effect Western Christianity and the Messianic Jewish movement in Israel? Well, that's a a good question. You know, uh, the kingdom of God advanced through a relationship. You know, it's up to God to connect us with the right people. And uh, we are open. Of course, today it's very, how to say, difficult to, to start to build the bridges because every church, every pastor, every leadership team in the churches, they have their own vision and passion to fulfill this vision. And that's right. But we're living in this very specific and unique time when God is regathering his people back to their promised land. And he wants other nations to see that and understand this prophetic move. Because nations are having a vital part in the plan of God in regards of Jewish people. So also, biblically speaking, Israel is supposed to be a light to the nations. We see this in the Old Testament. We see this in the ministry of Paul. In the New Testament, when he, he and the first apostle, they took the gospel abroad. They brought the gospel of the kingdom of God to the Greek-Roman world back then. And so I believe today the same call is remaining for Israel and uh, some Messianic believers and leaders in the land to bring revelation of who God is and the kingdom of God to the nations. So I think it's a very important for uh, Christians in the nations to walk to this pattern of of building bridges with messianic body. It's a big topic, but I think we should all consider that. Yeah. Many people listening might think, well, I don't care less what's going on in Israel. I'm quite happy doing what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. I have a deep understanding of the Bible, but you would challenge that. You know, I appreciate every church and every individual, you know, every believer, we're supposed to be a people of vision, okay? Whatever it's a personal vision for personal life, in a sense for us, in the family, at the workplace, community. But I also feel that it's very important, according to the Bible, to discern the times we're living in, okay? 
And um, we should be occupied, in a sense, positively speaking, with what God has entrusted us in the local terms, okay, in our city, in our congregation. But we also should be alert and aware of what God is doing in the Middle East. And I like the title of your book. In fact, it's somewhere here. Yeah, 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 yeah. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, that, that's your book, you know, you know, and the title is "What Is God Doing in Israel?" That's an important book because we're living in a generation when God not just um, regathering His ancient people, He's actually uh, meeting with them and giving them a new heart and new spirit, as it is written in the prophets. So I think every church leader should be connected to what God is doing not just in the Middle East, in Israel. Because I believe the we call revival in the nations should be connected with, with what God is doing in Israel today. You've mentioned my book. We're going to talk about your book, Andre, Influence. Okay. <laughs> it's called Influence, your latest book. And I found this very interesting because... You are encouraging all believers of whatever nation they're living in to, you say, influence responding to the call of God. It's to be an influence within their society. But it's written very much with an Old Testament uh, background. Mm -hmm. You're drawing on the scriptures to make your point. Now, let's start with the chapter that you've written, perhaps, on business, Christians in Business. Mm -hmm. You're making the argument that work is as important or is a form of worship to God. You cannot disassociate work from your spiritual life. It's all one and the same. That's very much a Hebrew mindset to begin with, isn't it? Well, I think it's a God mindset, if I can use this expression. First of all, not everybody is called to be a business person. But many people are called, okay? When we give in our lives to God, when we say Jesus, yes, we say, well, be my Lord. It's not just be my Savior, be my Lord. That means uh, be a Lord of my time, be Lord of my skills, be Lord of, of my business, be Lord of my money. We acknowledge his Lordship over our lives. That's the point, okay? So now... In the Bible, work was existed before the fall. And this is what I'm writing in the book, you know. And even the fall, we're talking about disobedience of first people. You know, even that that tragic experience, okay, that create a distance between us and God, it doesn't cancel a call on us to work, okay, And so business people, first of all, should understand that work, it's a form of worship. And it's it's very important to God of how we're doing our business. And this is what I want to give you. And I, I can talk about this long, but for time's sake, let me give you a principle and illustration. Okay. First of all, it's not enough for business people to have a good work ethics, okay? It's important. We should pursue God's values of how we're working with people, you know, how we run our organizations, okay, or businesses. But also on the flip side, Bible has an important principles of how business can influence the society we're living in. So, Again, I just want to repeat myself. We, the morality is good. We need, to, we need to be examples of what God is calling us to do, okay, and to live. But also we need to have be equipped with, with certain principles. And in the book I'm writing about a one business person that has time, he understands his skills, he, he knows what he would like to do. So he opened up a small business in a rich Oh, and sorry, in the poorest um, area somewhere in India, okay? But you don't have to go to India, okay? It, it can be your own neighborhood. It, 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 you, you, you ask God, what should I do with that? 
But let me finish. So he opened up a small business and uh, that he's starting to producing a small phones just for people in this area to be connected with each other. They don't need their fancy uh, smartphones. They just need somehow the venue to communicate with each other. So he employed people to his factory. And by doing that, he started to influence the poverty in this neighborhood. In a sense, he started to eliminate the poverty. Okay, And then so, so on the, the, the the life of people start to be changed because now they have they have work, they have income, now they can you know bless their families. So the next step would be for this business person is to train someone from their midst to be a next manager and to be a next leader in this factory. So that's just a basic example. Okay, when you understand your skills and you understand you know what you would like to do for the Lord, you know you don't you you just you just See the world as a field that God wants you to be in, and you're going, you know. But this principle is from Old Testament, because Jewish people were entrusted with with land, you know, and they need to kind of rightly use this land. And if some people get in poverty somehow, they can help him. But it's a big story. It's it's a big story. I, I would just encourage you to. To, to, to continue to read through the Bible and you will find all these uh, principles. You've been listening to Andrei Toplinsky, a Messianic Jewish believer originally from Russia. He's lived in Israel for over 20 years and today is a Bible teacher and writer. And we'll hear more from Andrei on next week's program as he continues to talk about his latest book, Influence, in which he asks, can or should believers influence the society in which they live. The Olive Tree Reconciliation Fund is a Christian charity based in the UK that supports the needs of both Jewish believers and Arab or Palestinian Christians living in Israel and the wider Middle East. If you'd like to know more about our work and receive our free bi-monthly newsletter, please visit our website olivetreefund.org Meanwhile, join me at the same time next week for another story from the Olive Tree. Until then, goodbye.